120. No, I have 120,000 students who are eligible voters <laughs> in Nigeria, and all of them are on scholarship. I have scholarship schools in Togo, in Syria alone. In giving it's not because I'm not doing this because oh, I want to be rewarded to become president. It's just a passion. I'm as tired as many of you here who are tired of the situation, who want a change. So I cannot just be sitting complaining, want a change. Then let us change it if we truly want a change. That is why we are here. So we talked about the international programs that drive our Greek and um, exports. Our Greek is, we are very passionate about our Greek. Our government, if by the grace of God we become the president, will take away subsidy. The subsidy, the amount we are plunging into the oil and gas sector is unnecessary and is corruption based. And we know what to do. I am, I've been in the oil and gas sector for many years. I'm a player there. The problem with subsidy is purely corruption. An individual, if you belong to that set, you can become a billionaire in one second. You trade crude, you go back again. The same container, the same vessel gets multiple subsidy. These are businesses by some few people that many of you praise, but you don't know they are the problem of our country. They are. So the best and the only way to solve the subsidy issue is to locally produce our crude. We have the crude oil. We have LMA refinery. We have the worry refinery. We have uh, what's your Kaduna refinery. Many of these refineries are not even working. They are intentionally shut down just because of that subsidy. We have created a lazy system to enrich some few people and put the country in huge debt. We must begin to revitalize this system. We have the modular refinery. A license for modular refinery was placed at about 100 million naira. Later, they increased to 500 million naira. How many people are? We must bring it down. People should set up modular refinery with 10 million naira license. We need it. And again, look at the issue that is happening in the creek. I'm from South South. Look at the issue happening in the creek. You go to the creek, you see these guys refining crude oil to blue gas. Are you aware that 90% of the diesel we consume in this country are produced from the illegal um, bunkery? That is why when the fight of illegal bunkery started, diesel price shot up because there was no diesel available. That's why you buy diesel at 500, 600 naira now. Because we're both, there's a problem, yes. But how do we begin to look at our problem peculiarly and solve it? There's a problem with those guys. Can we look at these guys? Look at the technology they are using. Begin to advance it with research. Make sure that those, those machines begin to, what, manufacture environmentally friendly. We can begin to look at smaller scale refinery in Nigeria that will solve our problem. Yes, it's not just, yes, they are criminals, they are doing what's but we can begin to look at the process around it. And Nigerians can begin to generate, we can begin to have our crude oil refined, not just with the bigger refinery, the modular refinery, even with the small scale refinery. We can't just, um, what's it called, um, throw the bat and the baby. There we can learn a lesson, even from an illegal operation, and make it legal and better. For example, in the US, are you aware that tip is legal in the US? Yes, many of us have, you see. Even when you walk into a, into a restaurant, no, even the person serving you will say, what about my tip? They could ask you. You need to go and check the history of why tip was legalized. Even in America, people now pay tax on tip. Yes. So why was it constitutional? Why was it driven? There's a purpose which we must look at. So something might be happening negatively, but we look at it. How does it solve our peculiar problem? The challenge and the solution to totally remove our of subsidy is local production. We are blessed with crude oil and we have to produce here in Nigeria. We talk about rejection of our products um, from, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a consequence of lack of research in Nigeria. The other day I was challenging women. I said, do you know that Ogbolo soup was invented, was discovered by our grandmothers, Ogbolo soup? Nothing come to happen, uh, something must, somebody must deliberately make it happen. Many of you are not even thinking it. Who discovered Egozi soup? Please. Somebody discovered it, but we don't, we don't have document. We are, not doc we are not a documented what, nation. In other part of the world, they would have known who discovered that particular recipe. So in our Greek, in, in, in our Greek, we have so much funds that are budgeted for research, but our research is zero. Our PhD students who are supposed to be researching, research and writing theses that would transform our economy to a better place and get solutions. For example, we have PhD students that are, that are writing research on Fourier series. And we're asking Coca-Cola, can you sponsor this student? Because his Fourier series technology can help your industrialization and robotic work. But there's no, there's no synergy. We must invest hugely. A country 
an organization without research and R&D is already dead because there's no future. My government will give priority to research. If that is not done, then we'll begin to have probes. We have the NERC, the National West Coast Nigerian Export Promotion Commission. Nothing. These are part of the agencies that are supposed to be looking. How do we make sure that our, our products in Nigeria meet up with the standard, quality standard that is needed to export? We talk about yam and the rest of them. You know very well that even corn, corn as a corn, was a, was a product of research in Texas. Corn was a product of research in Texas. We must begin to look at how it's being done in other world, like Israel, like Texas. These are countries that have advanced hugely in agriculture. My government will look critically in also channeling some of this subsidy to food. Nigerians must not go hungry. If any man is hungry, believe me, that man, hunger is a big problem. If you have a nation that is hungry, you can never think of self-actualization. We are still a country that is, we are a, we are a country that is hungry. We must solve hunger first. If you are able to solve hunger, Nigeria can think well. So we must make sure that we invest, we give subsidy. Let every Nigerian go to bed at least. People should not wait. Do you know there are some people that when they wake up in the morning, the food to eat that day is a problem. Millions of people are there. What they will eat, they wake up in the morning, what they are thinking is, what will I eat today? It means that we have a government that is not fatherly to Nigeria. We must begin to revert and give Nigeria that as a, that um, so distribution of um, intervention. In the distribution of intervention must not be done through party line. That is where many governments fail. We have so many interventions from the CBN grain funds to give. You will see most of these funds, for example, if it's APC or PDB government, they distribute it through party line. Um, where, where is the leaders? Not Nigeria. I am running under the platform of accord. When I become the president, I become the president of Nigeria. We must immediately begin to get data. Nigeria is, we don't have data in Nigeria. We don't even know who are the farmers. Sometimes a politician can claim I'm a farmer, collect that money, and it does not improve the, where is the data? There's no data. Are you aware that even a non-Nigeria can pick a Nigerian passport? Where, how do you get passport? Somebody will ask you which village are you from, and they will fill something for you. Even in Ghana, you cannot get a Ghanaian passport. Let's talk to ourselves as a country. A country where anybody can become a citizen of that country and it's not a citizen, it's already gone. It's gone. We don't have data. And we have not deliberately built data. How do you build data? You must get Nigeria from the date of birth, when Nigeria is born, to the date of death. People are giving birth. Even hospitals are not, they don't have a central data. How, how then do we build a country? We talk about insecurity. All these things are tied to data. If we don't, how, how do you even give? Banks are trying. In abroad, you, you run, you give loan and grant to people because of data. You know them. You don't even need to ask them, where are you from? Give us um, your land document. Because if with data, you start having credit score. In a country like Canada, you walk into a motor, um, a, 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 what's it called, a, a car store, and they check your credit score, 43, 330, and they give you, they give you, you don't even need to go to bank because this is a data-driven economy. We must begin to look at. All right. Thank, thank, you thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much, Professor Imumul. I know I can see your passion. I know if we give you time, in okay. the next three hours, we will still be here. Well, thank in the you. National Institute, we always uh, are very careful about time. We have two hours uh, for this program. Thank you thank very you. much. Uh, you will still have the opportunity of responding. Um, so I know you have not answered uh, the question on insecurity, for instance. I know you will still have the opportunity of doing all of that. But we want to take interventions from the floor. We want to take interventions from people uh, who are also joining us on Zoom. Uh, and we have less than 40 minutes to do all of that. Uh, so before I take questions from the floor, let me ask um, um, Mrs. Rachel Nuhu Birma. She is from African Peace Initiative. She just joined us and um, she would also like to make her own uh, intervention. Madam, please, you have the floor. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Your Excellency, most of the questions I have here have been addressed, so I'll just go straight to the point to ask some of those few uh, questions here. Going by the history of our nation, Nigeria, um, 
we've never been so divided as we are at the moment um, in terms of tribe and religion as uh, we are currently witnessing. So how do you hope to foster unity and harmony among Nigerians? That's number one. Number two, on security, how do you plan to secure our land borders, which foreign criminals seem to have gained access into the country illegally? Uh, what are you going to do about the forests that terrorists and kidnappers seem to have gained control of? Um, will you be seeking for assistance from the, um, to fight this insecurity? Uh, also, on unemployment, I want to know what are your plans on reducing unemployment in the country, which obviously is another contributing factor to insecurity in Nigeria. Let me go to Madam, education. I, I think that, that will be fine. We okay. have three questions already. Okay, yes, So let's sir. just take those three for now. All right. If sir. you have any more, uh, if, if, once, uh, if we have time at the end, we will take more of your questions. Oh, okay, sir. Let me just add a uh, prof. Um, I was reading somewhere and you said you are going to run an all-inclusive government. Um, what, what plans do you have for the youth, for the marginalized communities, for women, for the physically challenged? What plans do you have for them in your government? Perhaps if I want to add that to the questions you already have on your plate. Okay, let me quickly, as I also chip in other questions that were asked. Um, we are now in a country that is truly divided. We don't need to hide. You know, the problem I have is I'm a very open person. Sometimes when I'm invited to speak on TV, I say, do you want me to say the fact or you want me to keep it so that let's know because I can't. We are so divided and the division we have experienced as a nation is basically the body language of our leaders, the way they've run the country. My candidacy, naturally, even many of you seated here looking at me, you know that when I become the president, imagine that euphoria alone will bring peace to Nigeria. There are some candidates that they are running for election. Their, their combination can never bring, can never even go to a table of discussion of peace because their candidacy alone will create problems in some region. I'm a young Nigeria. My deputy is from Zamfara State, was from SSG of Zamfara State. So it by itself is a balance. I'm from Edo State, I was born in Lagos. And I represent that, no future now. Let me give an example. I was born the same year that the current president was the president, head of state. That was when I was born. We grew up seeing them as leaders, and they were telling us that we are going to be the leaders of tomorrow. Today, I'm contesting as president. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, I pray that he will hand over to me. So that <laughs> to be fair to the youth. So now we must go to the table and discuss Nigeria. We must discuss Nigeria. Every section of Nigeria must be part of Nigeria. Yes. We, even if you vote or you don't vote, once you become a president, you must carry along every part of Nigeria. Very, very important. I mentioned something that we have not had a father as a president. And fatherliness is not by age. I'm the youngest, but God might bless me with the with that wisdom. Solomon was not the oldest. If age is used to describe wisdom, then Methuselah would have been the wisest man on earth. So, God can pick a man. That neutrality, that balance that Nigeria needs is what we, we, we bring every part of Nigeria together. Both from the east, the north. And if you look, I've already demonstrated that. So, most people that are in my scholarship board are from the north. Those prisoners that we released, 200 of them, I didn't know them. Many of them were for Suleja. Some of them stole, what they stole were just orange. Somebody said, I will show you and use the, because of the judicial system we have in Nigeria, the person was jailed for two years because of orange. Of course, it's wrong. A lady sold, was selling during NSAS, was arrested. Some of these people did not have 10,000 Naira to bail themselves and they've been locked up for three years. They truly don't have. And when the case came to us, I said, let us, the, the list was more than 10,000. But I, I, I have to do what I can do based on my resources. I said, let's start. We got lawyers for them. We went to court for them. 200 of them were released and we were able to settle them privately. <laughs> privately. That is just what we've been doing. And many people say, how come you've been doing this thing? Nobody knows about it. I was not doing it for politics. I was only doing it because as a human. And many of us here are also doing it. We don't need to promote it. 
that value system also must, must, we need to shift that value within our youth. You now see many youths who even give their mother money, their mother, they give their mother money, they will post it on Facebook. It means that you have gotten the reward. The reward will not come from God since you want the people to see it. There are things you don't do if you want reward from God. Personally, that is my belief. So maybe these are part of the reasons why most of those things we've done has been so quiet. But when we are speaking out for Nigerians to know what we represent. So we are going to run an all-inclusive government. Even in my recent, I said it, I said, when I become president, um, Peter Obi is an Igbo person. And I believe that the Minister of Trade and Investment should be given to Igbo. So I have told him, I said, you'll become my Minister of Trade and Investment. <laughs> We are going to run an uninclusive government. I told him, and he said, Prof, yes. He's aware that position is kept for him. So, <laughs> so we are going to bring all Nigerians together. And hardship too. When you, when, you, when, you, when you have a country with limited resources, there will be so much strife. Now we live in a country where 90% of our resources is shared between 5% of the people. Why 5% of the resources is shared among all 99% of Nigeria? Such environment become a carnivorous environment. So the betrayal level will be high. We start eating ourselves. Not because Nigerians are wicked, but because there is lack of resources. For my prof, he is an agriculturist. You know, when you refuse to feed your fish with fish meal or fish feed, they start eating themselves. Not because they like to eat themselves, but the survivor. Any environment with limited resources, it just becomes a toxic environment we must equally distribute the wealth to Nigerians. That would douse the tension. So I, I'm just trying to talk about that. And let me quickly look at security. We cannot fight security. The kind of challenge we have in security now is not very peculiar. In security management, crime only happens when two things happen. One, the desire to commit crime and the opportunity for crime to happen. When a man who desires to commit crime sees the opportunity, crime would happen. It's only God that stops a man who desires to commit crime from not committing crime. But it's the job of the government not to make opportunity for crime to happen to happen. It therefore means that we cannot just fight security with human intelligence alone. We must invest usually in artificial intelligence and technology. In Nigeria, for example, how many satellites do we have? How do we monitor the activities of Nigeria? Because you must get in, in, um, intelligence before crime happens. The more sophisticated your intelligence apparatus, the safer, at least to a large extent, it becomes. We must invest hugely in technology. We must retrain and retrain our militaries and our, our security personnel. We must also improve on their welfare. In security, you do not employ a security personnel that is not encouraged. Otherwise, they work for the very criminal that is meant to protect you against. That is key. Even street vigilantes, sometimes when we talk to them, don't get the vigilante, you not pay salary. If you don't pay your street vigilante salary for two months, they will be the one to bring the thief. So that you know their importance next three months and you pay them their salary. So you must. You don't, you don't, you, there are sectors you don't joke with. Security is one of them. So we would invest usually. We talk about border control. We talk about investing in, um, in technology, satellite and space um, robotics and artificial intelligence. We talk about retraining, motivation of our security apparatus and reduction of economic hardship. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ibumola. Uh, one thing I find quite interesting in your presentations, uh, you keep saying, when I become president. I like that very much. You know, it shows that uh, you have a lot of confidence uh, in your chances of becoming president. And indeed, I was reading somewhere, and you said, um, that you were very certain you will get at least 50 million votes. I think it was in your um, interaction with uh, Japheth or Modua or somebody. You said you were certain you will get 50 million votes. We can only wish you the very best uh, in that uh, aspiration. Let me quickly go to the floor. We have limited time, as I said earlier. And so, if you have any question you want to ask, just make it limited to just one question. Um, we are going to take one from this end. We are going to take one from... Okay, we are going to take two from this end. Um, we are going to take one from this end. I said two from this end because we have our senior executive course, 45 uh, participants, uh, and we want to we will take two from this end. We will take one from this end. We will take one from the upper gallery. That is four. We will take two. One from this end. Two from this end. One from here. That's three. We'll take two from the upper gallery. That is that is a four. That's how many? That's five. Thank you. 
we will take two from our folks who are joining us uh, on Zoom. That's seven. And then we will take the management of the National Institute. Um, and that will give us a nine. And we want to do that in the next uh, 30 minutes. So please, you have a question. Go straight to the question. Please do not ask a question that has already been answer, uh, asked. And do not, um, do not bring up any follow-ups. We do not have the time for that now. So let me start from this end. Yes, sir. It's right there. Please go straight to your question and make it uh, brief. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, President. B. My name is Buhari Bukarbello with the Liberty TV. So I want to ask a question. The INEC have just introduced a new electoral law in order to better our democratic process. But unfortunately, the political class, I mean the politicians, are busy abusing the electoral law. Today we hear this president aspirants abusing his opponents. And either on social media, I don't want to call it a social media, a social website. Most of them use social websites to discredit their opponents. So is that giving you a concern, really, as a politician? Thank you very much. Let's go to the middle. You have a question, Kai, please. Yes, there's somebody there. There is somebody else there. That's two, and that's all. Okay, so there is somebody on this line. There is somebody just behind him uh, wearing a gray suit. So we are taking two, please. So he has a microphone already. He has two microphones now. Okay, somebody else has seized the microphone from you. Good afternoon, sir. Can I go on? Please go on. All right, my name is Funom Joshua, news correspondent, TVC News. Some stakeholders in the Nigerian project believe that uh, creating state police will help in tackling the uh, menace of insecurity bedeviling this country, while others feel Nigeria is not right for that at the moment. Just want to have your take on that. Sir. All right, thank you. Yours, your, your take, sir. All right, thank you. I am Dr. Deji Awobutu, FCA, sponsored by ICANN. Now, my question is on your plan to win the election because all these wonderful ideas that you've got will only come into force when you eventually win the election. I'm aware that we have 176,974 polling units all across the country. Have you made provisions for polling agents? How many House of Assembly members do you have? Because we know that winning elections in Nigeria is all about grassroots Conversing. So if you don't have enough House of Assembly members, don't you think that will give you a bit of a challenge and affecting your possibility of winning that election? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, your turn, sir. Uh, Professor Chris, your talk really impressed me. And uh, if I had the opportunity, you would have won me over. But I just have a simple question for you. How does your success story as a technical expert fit into your political ambition. Nigerians would, like, Nigeria, Nigerians would like to hear the story, how your success story fed into your political ambition. Thank you. All right, let's go to the other side. Let, let, me, let me quickly say that we also are a, a, an institution that promotes equal um, representation. So we, we would also like to hear the women speak. Um, all the people that have spoken so far are all men. So... Women, if you also want to make any intervention, can you just raise up your hand? The microphone will locate you. Is there any woman that wants to make an intervention? Any observation, question? The microphone will locate you. Yes, there is somebody there. Can you please pass the microphone to her? Yes, thank you. Let me stand on the existing protocol. I just want to know, you talked so much about education. What about that tiny group that is highly talented but not interested in academics? What are your plans for them? Thank you very much. Okay, there is also somebody at the back there, the madam in green. Can you please pass the microphone to her? Thank you very much. I'm giving, I'm giving more space because I've just been told that um, 
the people on Zoom have been cut off. There is poor network, so we can't link up with the people on Zoom. So that's why we are giving more space for people in the hall to ask questions. And Yes, please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Professor. Um, I see the political terrain as extremely aggressive, and I like your determination. However, how many times are you determined to try, you know, to achieve this ambition? Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's go to this uh, far end of the gallery. Does anybody have a question here? At this end, pass. We have a tradition here. If you don't speak quickly, we say pass. Pass, pass. All right. Okay. Since nobody is willing to speak here, let me give you a chance, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Rotsimi Agunsoye. Prof, you have very robust profile. You said in the course of your presentation, you said you don't need to go to the House of Senate or House of Reps because you are made already. Are you saying that those people that are in the House of reps or senate are there to make money and uh, also uh, don't you feel you need that political experience before you can do what you want to do because looking at where you are coming from you are a master of that field thank you Thank you very much. Anybody from the uppermost gallery? Pass, pass. All right. Let's, let's, um, I'm coming to the management of the National Institute now. Okay, please. He, he says he wants to take after that. Beautiful. So All right. Would, so let's go, sir. Again, I want to thank um, everyone for the lovely imputes. I'm very encouraged with the questions, and I believe that um, we, with such engagement, you know, Nigerians, like I said, can begin to look at who and who and what we represent as leaders. Um, the Beavers technology that the INEC introduced is one of the hope that we have. If the INEC had not introduced Beavers and if the new Electoral Act was not signed, for example, a candidate like me would not even, I would not be thinking of possibility because we know how election is being won in Nigeria. I'm from Edo State, but I was born in a very, a very remote area of Lagos, which is called Moshi. So if you are from there, you know we are very grassrooted. So I know everything, whatever it is that is being done. God also helped us to become a professor. But we still understand those techniques. So we are very happy with that technology. Um, now we are not going to be having the incident form. Collation centers will be very, activities that will be minimal. We want to believe in INEC. We want to see that INEC will do the right thing. And we're also happy with some policies, though they are very harsh policies to Nigeria. Like, for example, the change of NERA policies. It shows that, you know, there, there can be opportunity for a candidate that is not a money bag to do very well in the election. So, and again, abuses that candidates rain upon themselves also show desperacy. I've been talking to us, I've, I've not spoken out of desperacy to become, I want to become the president of Nigeria. However, I'm not desperate about it. I want to save Nigeria with my youthful age. I know that I'm 30 now, I'll be 40 this year. If I become, I know what I can do. Let me also say this. Some of my opponents, candidates, Paula Ahmed Shinubu, was a governor in Lagos. Most of the record they, they write today were things they achieved when they were youth. He was a governor at early 40s, 1999, about 40 something. Kwan Kwaso was a governor in his 40s. Obi was a governor in early 40s in Anambra. They didn't have. Also, when we talk about experience, many of them never had that political experience, and they, most of the things they achieve, their major point of achievement were achieved in that age. Atiku Abubakar resigned 
from retired from customer for the three years. They were all youths. So most of the testimony they used today were things they achieved when they were in the early age. We have Ambrose Ali from Edo State. Ambrose Ali was a professor in University of Ibadan. And he was brought from the academic setting to become a governor. Until today, if you go to Edo, I don't think any governor has beat that record. We talk about Bono, the governor of Bono. He was a professor somewhere too. The experience we need to drive our economy is a passion to serve the people. I'm telling you, it's a passion to serve the people. Mandela became president of South Africa. He fought for the liberation of his people through apartheid. And he became a president. Till today, they still talk about Mandela as a leader. What political experience does he have? We've had leaders like that who have transformed their world, their passion. I have been contributing massively to the emancipation of Nigeria through education. I'm probably the only candidate in this race that have given 500,000 Nigerian scholarship for the, even when I never thought about politics. That is the passion that I want to bring in and transform this country. That is what is needed. See, experience without passion to serve the people is rubbish. Many of these people have their experience. They have, but they don't, they are not seeing Nigerians as, I don't know, I don't want to go deep, but many of us understand this. So please, um, state police is very key and that is the way to go. But we must stabilize Nigeria first. We must bring Nigeria to Nigerians first. We must ensure that everybody has, has um, we've digested the concept of Nigeria. All the states are brought into Nigeria. The way it is, any president that come here to say, I would assign state police, would further divide this country. We will do that, but there's a work to be done. First, bring Nigerians together, and we're not going that way. How to win election, polling unit agents, a court party, if you look at a court party, a court party have been doing so well in elections. The last election on Oshun State, we were third after APC and PDP. It's not even the other parties. In Baesa, we are second. Today, if you go to your state, a court party is number one party in your state. In Lagos, we are doing very well. In Zafara State, my deputy was the second. No, what I'm saying is this. We have our groundwork. But nobody talks about the second or third. But what I'm saying with that is that there is a structure that needs a presidential influence. And again, I have, the, I have, my, I have a structure. See, how do you win election? You need numbers. I've just spoken to you. I know there's a lot of betrayers in politics. There are many people that will praise you. Don't worry, Professor Chris. You are the one. And on that day, somebody contested, was it Shego Degbami for governor? And even he had, he recruited 3,000 people. He was paying them salary. After the election, he did not have up to 3,000 votes. Even the people he recruited. Somebody contested for election. He, had, he scored zero. Even his own vote was not counted. But the days of those things are gone. With the new technology. So we, we are looking at, and if you look at what is happening, this cash or a thing, we, we, I know it's an hardship to Nigeria, but it also gives chances. And let me tell you, many as of rep members, let them go and let them hear it now. Many as of rep, as of assembly members may not return with some of these things that is happening. Now, when Nigerian votes, Nigerian votes will begin to count. And we want to, we just, we just need to have faith if we must drive our country forward. We just need to have faith. And again, let me quickly talk about this. How does my success, my success, I lost my father when I was 12. I knew what it was to go through life. When I was in the university, I was the only guy that was not buying handouts because there was no money to buy handouts. There was a day I wanted to borrow a textbook from someone. I said, please, borrow me your textbook. I'll give my ID card. The guy said, Chris, everybody know your shirt because I was always on a single shirt. You know, you, if you want to describe poverty, you can say, ah, so if you don't have a definition of you can say, Chris, that is poverty. That was me in, in the university. I have gone through that process. I know what a common Nigerian feels. I know what a mother who lost her husband feels as a widow. My mother was a widow at 37 years. And she stick with us all through. I set up that NGO to, to, to encourage women and youth because of what she went through. So I am coming from the background of the Nigerian people and mind. That is part of what. So is politics there to make, is politician there to make money? Please, let us be sincere. If you want to improve our country, you know that a large percentage of those that go into politics, go into politics because they want to make money. We should just be sincere to ourselves. We should not play game on ourselves. That is why they do, do or die. They want to kill themselves. If God says, this is not my time, I have a lot of things I'm doing. I have, I have schools everywhere. Even my one year into this race, I've endured a lot of things I'm supposed to do. 
I'm busy. My number one, as in my source of income is there. And I'm not, that's why I say I'm not desperate. There are some persons who are professional politicians. And that is their source of livelihood. If you threaten to take it from them, they will do anything possible. So we need to begin to build liberal Nigerians who see politics as a means to serve God and humanity. That is where we are coming from. What, what um, about talent industry? Talent is very key. A Nigerian recently won Grammy, Teams. Teams, won Grammy. That is investment. Do you know that Ajegunle, do you know Ajegunle? Ajegunle used to be that hub of talent before. But what has happened to Ajegunle today? Because there was no deliberate investment in that community. Where is Ajegunle today? We must begin to have leaders that would build Nigerians. Education is not just about former. We have the informal and non-formal. We have the TVET, which is technical vocational education. We must invest in India today. People don't even need to have a degree. They have what is called technical one, technical two. And a technical person in India is even better in terms of delivery than a graduate in Nigeria. That is why you see many companies in Nigeria have to get them as expatriates to sustain. Because of that impact. I am not fully against Japa. Let me tell you the truth. I'm not fully against Japa. You know, we all know what is called Japa syndrome. People wanting to leave. See, the population we have as a nation alone, by itself, we encourage Japa. But Nigerians should Japa with a resources. They should not go to any country to become a liability. They should become a problem solver so that they can bring back to Nigeria economy. I'm telling you, you cannot stop anybody that wants to travel from Nigeria from traveling. But you must build them. And Nigerian youth, look at we are the largest consumer of ICT in Africa. Our youth are doing so well in technology. Imagine, look at what is happening in West India. We now have almost all the CEOs of blue chip companies from West India, Google, Amazon, the rest of them, from a country. Why? Because the country have deliberately built their youth to become experts. If we build our Nigerian youth, they will be traveling to Canada, US, to become experts in those countries. Not, not to work as cleaners or shoemakers. And they can, by so doing, bring back Nigerian glory and make the world see Nigeria in a better light. That is what we must begin to do. Lastly, um, my political experience, I've talked about that. How many times do I want to try to achieve this ambition? Um, every team in the World Cup wants to win the election. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about the next World Cup. I want to win this World Cup. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Imumolen. Um, one quotable quote that I don't want us to forget. Experience without passion. Professor Imumolen, 2023. <laughs> All right, we will take intervention from the management of the National Institute. We have the Secretary Stroke Director of Administration, Major General uh, Chukwe Meka Udaya, MNI, he's here. We have uh, Professor Fumi Paramalam, MNI. She is representing the Director General. So I'll take the intervention of the Secretary and Director of Administration, and then we'll go back to the Acting DG to close the session. Okay, um, the SDA says pass. Acting DG. We don't actually have an acting DG. I'm merely representing the Director General, who is Professor Ayo Omotayo. Wow. Leaders must learn that politics is a platform for service to God and to humanity. That's another quotable quote from this, this afternoon. I must say, I personally, and I believe I would speak for the Director General, if he were online, I know he would say this, that we admire your passion, your boldness, your confidence. It has been a breath of fresh air and quite inspiring. So thank you very much, Professor, for availing yourself of this highly exalted and laudable platform to tell Nigerians what they need to hear telling us who you are as a candidate, what you bring to the table of leadership. You've made it very clear that leadership, good leadership that is, is in strong deficit in this country. You've also made it clear what your sectoral priorities are. and Many of them are issues that have really been vexatious over the past few de decades. Quite importantly, you have informed Nigerians that you intend to run an inclusive, transparent, and avant-garde 
gov government. We've made it very clear that the youth, the poor, the vulnerable are your priority. You've also helped us to understand that it's not just about the knowledge, but about the experience and the attitude of your heart. It's quite refreshing to know that you have a wide berth of knowledge across various sectors, not just from your practical professional experience, but also from your lived experience right from when you were a child. So you are a Nigerian par excellence, and you have shown it clearly in all that you have said this afternoon. I want to congratulate you, not for the fact that you might, and you have a very good chance of winning the elections, but for the fact that you have the boldness and the courage, and indeed the passion and the purpose to come out, to present yourself, to avail yourself of Nigerians and their call to leadership. Um, on behalf of the entire NIPS community, and I believe the Nigerian public, I want to say that this platform is not closed. We still have base to the election, and we'll call upon other political parties and presidential candidates in particular to avail themselves of what the presidential candidate has called Nigeria's Chatham House. It is open, available for you to, have, to, to come and tell Nigerians this is why they need you as their next leader. Thank you very much to those who, who are online. I'm sure they can't hear me, but uh, they will get to know from the media that we are thanking them for coming online. We are thanking uh, all those who are here in the hall. We especially want to thank our senior executive course 45 participants. They are the newly um, recruited leaders of the next, of the next uh, generation as well. And I think um, we want to single out the Nigerian youth, which you represent, Prof. Uh, you are a beacon to the Nigerian youth. And I believe that from your candidacy alone, so many more will feel inspired to take up the mantle to contest for elections. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a very good evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fumi Paramalam, for presenting the uh, DG. We have come to the end of today's program. And before we take the national anthem, uh, let me invite Mrs. Bumi Okonoda to deliver the vote of thanks. Sorry, I had forgotten before she delivers the vote of thanks. I know the DG would have wanted me to extend appreciation to the panelists in particular and our dear moderators. Thank you very much. And also those of your entourage. The Director General, ably represented by Professor Uluwa Fumilayo Paramalam, MNI. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to stand on the already existing protocol. I really don't know what else to say after the Director of Studies has uh, indirectly done the vote of thanks. But since I have been called, I will just still say something. Okay, so. I'd like to thank the Director General for providing the veritable platform for this uh, party. I would also like to thank the our special guest of honor, Professor Imunolen Irene Chris, for finding time to abdomerate and let us in on his plans and programs for our dear country, Nigeria. I want to say once again, je vous remercie. I also want to thank the Director of Studies for her representation, for her support, and her presence here today. I want to thank the SDA, Brigadier General Tukwemeka Udaya, MNI PLSC Daga, for his presence here today. I also want to thank the moderator who has steered this session excellently, and the panelists for their contributions. I want to also thank the audience. I see representative of the Senior Executive Course number, five, number 45, I beg your pardon, 
2023 participants, members of Accord Party Year present. I would like to thank you all for finding time to be with us today. So as you go, I'll just say merci beaucoup and bon voyage to your respective destination. Thank you. Uh, your Excellency, since you are penciling down names of your cabinet already, please remember me for the office of the CBN governor or the Minister for Finance. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, can we rise for the national anthem, please? 